Today on Forbes, desperate for power, AI companies look to the nuclear option. For all the hype and billions of dollars swirling around AI, the only certainty is the grid-depleting amount of additional electricity needed to power the data centers running the AI itself. And in that, Clayton Scott sees a massive business opportunity. Scott, chief commercial officer for New Scale Power, which is commercializing small-scale nuclear systems, told Forbes, quote, It's a unique time and a unique situation. We landed in this unplanned, perfect match with the data world. A Goldman Sachs report, which sees AI applications triggering a 160% jump in overall data center power needs, estimated that ChatGPT queries need nearly 10 times as much electricity as Google searches. Pair that with the reality that the U.S. grid is at or near peak capacity relying on existing fossil fuel plants, with a backlog of wind and solar renewable energy projects waiting to be connected to the grid in an effort to slash carbon emissions, and you've got the recipe for an energy crisis. Scott hopes that New Scale Power provides one answer for data centers and their AI customers. Each of its small modular nuclear reactors, or SMRs, can generate 77 carbon-free megawatts continuously. That could allow them to operate independently of the grid entirely. The Portland-based startup, which went public in 2022 after over a decade of R&D, is working with data center developer Standard Power to supply 24 SMRs capable of collectively generating nearly 2 gigawatts of electricity, enough for a mid-sized city. Currently, it's navigating the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's lengthy review process and doesn't expect to deploy reactors until late this decade. The company reported just $4.6 million in revenue in the first quarter and a loss of $56.4 million as it prepares for commercial deliveries. NuScale is one of many nuclear and battery startups aiming to capitalize on AI's energy intensity. Typical data centers use about 32 megawatts of electricity, enough to power 6,000 homes, compared with about 80 megawatts for AI-oriented data centers. This according to Doug Vine, Director of Analysis at the Center for Climate and Energy Solutions, an environmental policy think tank in Arlington, Virginia. He said, quote, and they need energy-dense systems, which unfortunately is why natural gas plants are still popular. But the same thing is true of nuclear power. From a very small footprint, you can generate a lot of electricity. Armin Shahabi, a Lawrence Berkeley lab scientist who's tracked data center power demands since 2007, said that NVIDIA's H100 chip, loaded with eight GPUs and two CPUs, is the most in-demand AI server box for data centers. Shahabi estimates that each one uses eight to 10 kilowatts of electricity versus previous servers, which would use a fraction of that. They generate so much heat that cooling them uses up to 30% more water than traditional data centers. Globally, AI demand may use up to 6.6 billion cubic meters of water in 2027, or according to a Cornell University study, quote, more than the total annual water withdrawal of Denmark, or half of the United Kingdom. Shahabi said, quote, they're so heat dense and so power dense, they're up in the range of 70 to 80 kilowatts per rack. And there's talk that's going to go up to 100 kilowatts really soon. It's basically 10 times higher than servers used in the past. Companies like Microsoft are also making plans to use SMRs to power their AI data centers. And company founder Bill Gates is chairman of TerraPower, which is developing a new kind of sodium reactor that also uses salt to store energy. OpenAI's Sam Altman is backing Oklo, a developer of small fission reactors that recently went public, as well as Helion, one of many startups attempting to commercialize nuclear fusion, a compelling carbon-free power source that's free of problematic nuclear waste. Still, it's unlikely any fusion-based systems will become commercially viable until the 2030s. For full coverage, check out Alan Onsman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.